Did you know there is a surprising connection between a 19th century physics concept, a breakthrough in information theory, and the equations that power modern machine learning? If you've ever asked yourself, how do we actually use data to find the parameters in machine learning models? And what does entropy have to do with it? You're in the right place. Let's dive in and uncover the hidden logic that links the laws of nature with the tools of data science. Imagine you're staring at a spreadsheet, row after row of data, each one representing some outcome of a measurement at an instance of time. You know that beneath all those numbers, there's a hidden probability distribution that governs the data. However, the true form of that distribution is forever out of reach. We can try to estimate it, but we'll never know it exactly. Here is a recap of how we usually model the probability of a dataset. In our last video, we saw that both physics and machine learning point us toward a fascinating common ground, the state of maximum entropy where the system stabilizes. By Taylor expanding the general form of the probability function around this equilibrium, we naturally arrive at the multivariate Gaussian distribution. This is our simplest model of the unknown probability of the dataset we have. But this leaves us with a nagging question. If we never know the true probability, how can we actually estimate the unknown constants of the Taylor expansion that later appear as the parameters of our models? In other words, how do we use data to find the best values for the unknown constants of the linear regression? How do we know we're not just guessing blindly? If you are interested, stay tuned. Before moving forward, if you are from a map-based field like physics looking for a data science industry job, I invite you to join our bootcamp. Here are the key highlights of the program. Most importantly, it's free if no job is landed. Also, there will be weekly, live, expert-led, hands-on project-solving sessions. Here's where a century-old idea becomes our guiding light. Relative entropy, first introduced by physicist Ludwig Boltzmann, and later reintroduced by Kuhlbach and Liebler as the KL divergence. This simple equation is actually fundamental for estimating the parameters in machine learning models. In his influential paper, Further Remarks on Some Problems of the Mechanical Theory of Heat, Boltzmann introduced this equation as the measure of the difference, or divergence, between two probability distributions. In this equation, we denote the true probability distribution of our dataset by P and our estimated distribution derived from Taylor expansion by G. Relative entropy, sometimes called kullback liebler divergence, quantifies how much information is lost when we use G instead of P. More formally, it's defined as the expected difference between the surprise, defined as negative log probability, under the true distribution and that under our estimate. As a sanity check, if our estimated distribution G perfectly matches the true distribution P, then the argument of the logarithm becomes logarithm of one which is zero, and the relative entropy turns to zero. That means no information is lost, and our estimate is perfect. However, in practice, we never know the true distribution P. So, how can we actually use relative entropy? The answer is to use our data to construct a non-parametric estimate for the true distribution P, called the empirical distribution. In this equation, the Dirac delta function means that our estimate for the probability is only non-zero where data points enumerated by index i are located. Also, capital N is the total number of rows in our data set. Why does this work? The law of large numbers tells us that, as the amount of data grows, the empirical distribution converges to the true distribution. So the more data we collect, the better our estimate of P becomes. Let's break the relative entropy formula into two parts. One term involves our estimated distribution G and contains the parameters we want to optimize. The other term depends only on the empirical distribution and contains no free parameters to tweak. If we plug the empirical estimate of true probability into the equation for relative entropy, it turns into the following. Remember, our goal is to minimize this equation as a measure of information loss. However, since the second term in the relative entropy doesn't depend on our parameters, we can only minimize the first term. So, at this point, our goal is to minimize the following term. Since n is just a positive number, we can equivalently minimize the following term and arrive at the same result. At this point, a mathematical trick comes in handy. Minimizing a function is equivalent to maximizing its negative. A sum of log terms is equal to the log of the product of the terms. The parentheses on the right-hand side are just the definition of the likelihood defined as the product of the probabilities of rows. 
or in other words, the probability of the dataset assuming that rows are independent of each other. Therefore, we are in fact trying to maximize the logarithm of likelihood, which leads to the same results as if we try to maximize the likelihood itself. From the previous video, we remember that in the case of linear regression, we modeled the probability as a multivariate Gaussian distribution, where vector x refers to a row of the dataset, and the matrix sigma and the vector x-bar are free parameters to be determined through maximizing the log likelihood that we just discussed. So, our maximization task becomes to take the derivative of the log likelihood with respect to these free parameters and set that to zero. The solutions to the resulting equations would be our estimates for the values of the sigma matrix and x-bar vector. For most probability distributions, the resulting equations can't be solved analytically so we have no option but to rely on numerical methods like gradient ascent, and the good news is that most of these methods are implemented in standard Python libraries, so you can use them with a single line of code. However, for the case of linear regression where the probability distribution is the multivariate Gaussian distribution, analytic solutions do exist. Here are the solutions to the maximization equations. The first equation is the empirical mean of the columns of the dataset, and the second equation is the empirical covariance of the dataset. From the previous video, we remember the equation for linear regression, where its parameters depended on the free parameters of the probability function as follows, remembering that y is just the last component of vector x, and equation above tells us that y-bar is estimated as the mean of the target column of the dataset. On the other hand, from the previous video, we remember that the beta vector is given in terms of the parameters of the probability function, which after inserting their estimated values, read in this equation. Index i runs over the samples of the dataset, while indices j and k run over the columns of the dataset. Therefore, using a concept physicist Ludwig Boltzmann introduced centuries ago, and Kolbach and Liebler expanded later, we could estimate the free parameters of the linear regression using data. At this point, we have answered one of the two questions we asked at the end of the previous video. That is, we explained how datasets can be used to estimate the parameters of the linear regression. The second question of how all these can be used in a computer to solve practical problems remains for another video. I hope you enjoyed this video. Until next video, take good care of yourself.